Well, hello Liberians, welcome back to another glorious let's play. We are trying, of course, to make Liberia great again. Welcome back, guys, and welcome, of course, to our glorious let's play of Liberia. We are basically going to go ahead and continue what we were doing last turn, and that's rebuilding this economy as best we can, while also maintaining a strong military presence in the region. And that's not easy. I mean, as you could imagine, maintaining a strong military presence and running a good economy is, is really hard to do. Um, we've got to pay off all of these soldiers, and it's, it's not cheap at all. So what I'm considering doing is actually starting a war with these two eastern areas. I think it's Ghana as well as Kingdom of the Upper Volta. Um, and we might go to war with both of them and take them over. I might actually go with, to war with Kingdom of the Upper Volta first uh, or Ghana first. really depends. Um, but I think this is going to assist us. It's not only going to increase our land, but it's also going to do something very important. It's going to lower the amount of soldiers we have, uh, which I'd prefer to do without disbanding them. We could disband them, but I want to go the military route. So we go into Ghana, glorious Ghana, really good soccer team, by the way, uh, and we are going to declare war. Uh, as you can see, they're unaligned, and that works out beautifully for us. And of course, we couldn't go more than a few weeks without starting a war. Now, this is actually our main army right here. I'm going to move him into, move them into Dagbon, and I'm going to move this army into to the Gold Coast. And of course, if it is called the Gold Coast, I'm assuming it's got some gold, right? I'm going to need to prospect that area, make sure that uh, everything there is kosher. So we're going to move in. I'm going to order a cavalry charge, as a matter of fact, in the Gold Coast, order another cavalry charge in the Gold Coast, and we're going to take these troops over here. Uh, and thankfully, I'm not building any more troops. I don't think we need to. I think this is enough to win this war. And we're going to move them to the Gold Coast as well. Let's go and begin our war. Another glorious battle in this country. Here we go. All right, so the Ghanese, they're definitely ready for a fight. Um, they're, they're ready for defense, but let's see just how strong their army is. And then taking a place like Togo next to them uh, is going to be ten times easier. I mean, that's got just one army. It's really not going to be much of, an, much of an issue for us. So I think this second part of conquest uh, should be fairly easy. Of course, moving over to the east to Nigeria. Now, that's going to take a long time, uh, but we can think about that later. So let's take a look at the battles here. All right, right now we're not doing very good on the lower battle. We're doing pretty well on the top battle. So I'm actually going to order another cavalry charge here in the Gold Coast. And we're going to take the rest of these soldiers. We're going to move them here. And uh, hopefully we don't have a rebellion. We've, we've got Islamic rebels over here, but we're going to try to ignore that for now. And you know what? Just to be safe, I don't really like to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and actually get some infantry, some light cavalry, let's say, uh, building in one of these provinces. Because this area is actually... Uh, not going very well for us, so I'd rather not lose a battle there. Here we go. The Ghanis have a decent military here. I didn't expect that. Uh, we might have <laughs> some issues uh, with this first attack. Lordy. Okay, Ghana has changed to general mobilization. Now, our mobilization is actually at low readiness, which is not good. We want to change that back to regular mobilization. Um, and actually, I was going to show you guys the different nationalities we have in this country. We'll probably do that before the end. Um, sorry, guys. Um, and let's go ahead and take a look here. We'll go ahead and do... Hmm... What am I screwing up here? This is weird. What the? It's supposed to be in the government section, isn't it? What am I doing wrong? All right, we're going to have to figure this out. Um... Okay, guys, sorry about that. Now, we are going to go ahead and just change to uh, actual partial mobilization. I don't want to change to full mobiliz mobilization, like I said. And right now, our actual military morale is excellent. But as usual in these fights, we have um, a lower amount of arms than we'd like. And that's just because we have so many damn men. It costs a lot to keep these guys afloat. So I'm actually going to get some infantry here. Um, we are going to build some infantry and obviously the cavalry here and try to send them into combat. I want to take a look at how the Battle of Dagbon is going. It's going really well on our side. Now, this battle is not going well at all. In fact, we're about to lose the Battle of the Gold Coast. Um, so it's really important that we get our armies there quickly. And more importantly, that we win this fight in the north so that we can send men there to continue fighting. 
So that actual arm shortage is minus 19, which is not good at all. Uh, but again, our men are pretty good with the bayonet, so I'm not too concerned. We've won wars before with an arm shortage, and we can win this one too. All right, we've changed to partial mobilization, and there is some civil disobedience in Matam. It's not something I like to see, but we're going to keep moving into the Gold Coast. And once again, I hope this battle's going well. 17-5. I mean, eventually we're going to get a nice victory here. And we're actually still holding off with two. So if we can get those reinforcements in there, I'll feel a lot safer, to be honest with you. We might be able to hold out against these guys. And we could also just push the attack over here in the north. Wow, guys, Argentina actually annexed Uruguay. We saw this uh, happening before, and we were pretty amazed by it. And yes, Argentina has eaten up Paraguay. They've eaten up Uruguay. I mean, next is Brazil. I, I don't know who else they could go for. They could go for Chile. But Argentina is a major, major fascist dictatorship in our game. Um, and they're doing exceptionally well. Um, as you can see, they're a nationalist state. Uh, really just a pro-fascist state, let's be honest here. Um, let's take a look back here at this war. So I want to see quickly. 212. 17-4. Part of me wants to keep attacking. Yeah, I know. God damn it, evil man. We're, we're going to block evil man for a little bit. Hold on, guys. All right, sorry about that. So we're back. <laughs> um, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. So I'm thinking, actually, I want to stop this. Cancel the current order. I'm going to move to Dagbon. If we can win in Dagbon, we can send our forces into this area. Let me cancel his move order. Move him into Dagbon again. And this guy, I'm going to have to move in here because if not, the enemy could actually beat us. Um, in fact, they still might. Um, they still have a chance to beat us in this sector. But if we can win up here, I feel a lot more confident that we could go south, crush the enemy uh, in the Dagbon region, and win this war once and for all. Also take a look at the enemies here because we haven't taken a good look at the Ghana government. And I'm curious to see who we're fighting. All right, Argentina is now threatening to attack Chile. <laughs> yes, I thought so. And pagan population riots. This is obviously happening. It's been happening for a while. We're not going to go crazy about it. Um, but we should probably be a little careful. Now, I'm going to move this unit over here into Gold Coast. And sorry, I keep mentioning Dagbon, but it's actually Gold Coast where we're having trouble winning. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move into Dagbon. We should be able to beat these guys very soon, especially with these reinforcements. At least I'm hoping so. And then we can move south. We can move into Togo afterwards, into the uh, Kingdom of the Upper Volta. Essentially, this entire area will become ours. Uh, and this is why it's so important for us to keep this strong military presence. Eventually, we can consolidate, we can focus on building the economy and building our country, etc., but we're doing that too, but we're really mostly focusing on uh, taking this area. And it looks like the Kingdom of Southern Sudan has declared independence from Sudan. And once again, another theocratic revolt, and this is very likely to actually happen um, in our situation. So it looks like the Papua New Guinea is now a socialist country? Yes, it is. <laughs> so Papua New Guinea actually turned into a socialist state, and they just uh, proposed a peace treaty. Um, just kept the status quo. Um, very interesting. And we do have Catholic population uh, rioting in Agnibi. Now, we finally got um, distillation dealt with, and I'm definitely going to go for military industrialization. This is going to allow us to build that technological center, which is really going to assist our military in its conquests. And seeing as we have six, seven, or eight more countries we're planning to take over, uh, that's probably going to be uh, useful. At least I think it will be. So let's take a look over here. 19-1. We're about to break through here. I'm definitely going to order a cavalry charge and send these guys uh, into Gold Coast, and hopefully they can hold the region. All right, guys, sorry we had a little cutoff there, and this actually happens quite a lot in Making History the Great War. Um, the game has a lot of issues with, you know, every few turns, it just stops. Uh, this is why I try to save almost every other turn. So we're going to go ahead and continue our war here with the enemy. We've just taken over the north, and of course now we should be able to move into Ghana and crush the rest of the resistance. Uh, but one thing we'll find here is that these guys are not the worst fighters in the world. In fact, they have a decent army. Now, right here on the right side, they've only got one unit, so I'm going to send my two weaker units over here to crash in there, take them out, hopefully, uh, and send our northern part of our army down south. So let's go ahead and do that. And the conflict at Dugbun has caught the attention of Mali. That's not good. 
Uh, so Mali, of course, uh, ha does have a ton of, of little wars. There's been just a lot of people breaking away from it uh, to form their own kingdoms. Uh, so I'm not too concerned, but who knows if they've now uh, possibly formed an alliance with the Kingdom of the Upper Volta. Uh, I haven't taken a look, so I don't know if that's possible. As you can see, we're definitely losing here in the southern Gold Coast region. So we're going to send our main army here. We're going to send these two uh, smaller units to Volta Togo. And uh, eventually we're going to be moving into Togo itself over here. Uh, but right now, we're just focusing on Ghana. And I want to see if this changes the front lines on the Gold Coast. Because the enemy has a pretty good system of defense here. Okay, sectarian unrest, and again, I'm not going to be sending any infantry over there to deal with the sectarian unrest, uh, because quite often it goes away by itself, and number two, we've got a war going on. But I'm getting sick of all the sectarian unrest, and in fact, I promised you guys that I would show you the nationalities uh, for our particular country here. First, I want to see how the battle is going, and as you can see, 1712, that's pretty easy, even. That's actually a really even fight. It uh, looks like we're taking slightly more casualties than the defender here, 26%, where they're taking 20%, but I still think we can win. So let's go ahead. Let's send in another infantry unit. And of course, our people are grow are working very hard to grow some farms, create some railroads, etc. We're doing everything we can to improve our country while also carrying out an offensive war on the enemy. <coughs> okay. Yes, yeah, someone is honking for the victory of Liberia. Glory! So 1711, again, this might take a little while for us to win this war. Um, we're still building ironworks here, which is really going to help us. We are de desperately in need of iron. As you can see, we're losing three steel a turn, and uh, we need it badly. Let's see if we're doing all right over here. 2-1. If we can beat them here, we can obviously move our troops into uh, the Gold Coast even more. But for now, we're just going to have to wait until that battle's done. And we just got another cavalry unit. I can't wait to order a charge and to continue our victory in this African region. At this point, we will have almost all of West Africa. Um, well, at least Northwest Africa, I should say. Um, I'm not even sure if I want to take Mauritania uh, or Morocco. I just don't really see the point. Morocco looks all right, but Mauritania is useless. It's just a bunch of desert, really. And there we go, a recruitment center in Freetown. Everybody loves that. I'm actually going to go ahead and send this cavalry up here. Uh, because once we win this battle, uh, we can go ahead and send these troops down south. And right now, nobody's taken any casualties in the Battle of the Volta Togo. It's just a bunch of, uh, I guess, missed shots, close calls, but no actual casualties. So they're getting away with a pretty easy existence right now. Not like their comrades in the uh, Gold Coast campaign, uh, who are having a hell of a time defeating the enemy here. Although finally, the odds have turned in our favor, and now it's 37% of the enemy that are taking casualties. That's more like it. Okay, Sunni Islam population riots in Gambia. This is the second uh, population riot we've had uh, with these troops here, so I'm not crazy about what's happening, but I'd really re prefer to focus on the war, and um, I'm thinking if we win this, we can go ahead, we can send our troops out here and deal with the, the Sunni population riots, so we're going to go ahead and keep focusing on this conflict and ignore the rioters for now, uh, but eventually we do have to do something about them. This whole time, we've declared war on the poor people here. <laughs> we haven't found out what their government type is or anything. So we'll take a quick look at our enemy, Ghana, and see uh, what they're running here to see if we have any justification for defeating them. <coughs> okay, here we go. Pagan population riots in Guinea. So we've got a lot of different religious riots, uh, but I think they'll, they'll be okay. So it's Accra in Ghana. It's, of course, the capital city. And they are a dictatorship. So dictatorship against dictatorship. I don't feel bad killing them at all. This is good. <laughs> these are uh, these are people we want to fight for sure. Um, so let's keep up the fight, guys. Hopefully we'll continue it. We can actually go ahead and do some orders in uh, in this area. And I'm actually going to start with building some low rail density. Um, and actually, no. Let me change that, sorry, to uh, enclosed farms. This place actually produces pretty good food. So it would really be useful for us. Even though we are at a food surplus, you know, we're going to be building troops left and right. We're going to need food eventually. Anyway, guys, I hope you're enjoying the war. I'll go ahead and do one more turn for you guys. And uh, we will end here and uh, hopefully carry on in the next 
turn with a victory against Ghana. Some of you thought I should just stay put and just build the economy up, and we're kind of still doing that, but we're not going to stop our conquests. We can't. We must show people we are the Iron Feast of Africa. Okay, civil disobedience has ended in Futa Jajong, ended in Gambia. That's what I like to see. And see, sometimes we don't even need to get involved. Problems resolve themselves. And still no casualties going on there. That's a pretty funny conflict. Uh, as you can see here, the enemy casualties have moved up to 50%, and we definitely outnumber the enemy here with 15. So, so far, guys, our glorious dictatorship is doing awesome. Government support is 8%, not an all-time low, but not an all-time high either. And there's a lot of things that we could improve. We could obviously get rid of our corruption. Our corruption is terrible in this country. Uh, but we're not going to be doing anything until we win this war. And right now, you can see here we've got an arms shortage penalty, which is why we're trying to build arms factories as soon as possible. But our readiness penalty, we don't have. We're, our men, our people are always ready for a fight. Um, I also promised you guys we take a look at nationalities. So we are going to look at the nationalities here of our country. And you guys can see just how incredibly diverse they are, guys. Uh, if you look here, also not only the population of each of these nationalities, but the religious groups. And it does look like most of our people here are pagan. Uh, the problem is pagans are all sorts of different religions. It's not one unified religion. So if we created that theocracy, not only would we send ourselves back to the Dark Ages, uh, but these, this pagan theoc theocracy would not last. Uh, it would be a lot of breakaway countries from our original conquest. So we must keep the dictatorship strong. I could also always promote a political party within my country. And I'm thinking of promoting either the nationalists or the socialists. The problem is that the socialists and the nationalists, they don't really have any support. I mean, the nationalists have 10% support, and their governing ideology bonus is 44%. So that would be pretty awesome, but we can't do it for a while. Anyway, guys, I hope you're enjoying the series. Keep supporting it, and thank you so much for watching. Hope you all had a Merry Christmas, and Happy Holidays, and uh, take care.